this is testing DSC resources with Test Kitchen and Pester. So a couple of uh, technologies that uh, I find quite useful. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Steve Morawski. I'm on the community engineering team at Chef. Uh, you've probably heard that a time or two. Uh, MVP, PowerShell, last few years. I'm a practitioner of Chef-style DevOps. And if you're interested in what the heck that is, uh, check out the keynotes from ChefConf. Uh, Adam Jacob did a talk on Chef-style DevOps, and it is pretty freaking cool. Uh, I'm a DSC junkie, and um, well, as we determined yesterday, I'm not quite an all-around nice guy, but I'm a sort of nice guy. So with that, we are done with slides. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> so the rest of this is going to be text editor and demo. And of course, PowerPoint takes it out of mirroring. So we'll fix that. Oh, no. There we go. Come on. All right. There we go. So let's see. How's the text? Need to be a little bigger? Right. So I'm going to uh, introduce you guys to a great tool that we have in the Chef ecosystem. Uh, it's a tool called Test Kitchen. The great thing about it is it's not chef specific. It's a pluggable, it's a pluggable uh, test tool and it is pretty much a lifesaver for me in the infrastructure as code space. And the reason that, the reason that it's handy is, I don't know about you guys, but infrastructure as code is a scary, scary thing because we're enabling an agent to run in the background on our systems all the time that has the ability to change the state of the systems. That scares me as a guy who likes to be in control of what my infrastructure is doing. I like to know that you know, things aren't just gonna go off and reboot when they want to or add and install features as they feel like it. So I like to know what's gonna actually happen when I apply configurations or when I'm developing resources to do things. And Test Kitchen's a framework for helping make that happen. Um, what, it what it does is it allows me to, as I'm developing resources, as I'm developing cookbooks, as I'm developing whatever, I can write tests in Pester against how I expect the system to behave. And then I can spin up infrastructure and run those tests against it to verify that my configuration management is doing what I expect it to do. So I'm not relying on the configuration management tool to tell me, hey, I did what you told me to. I'm using some kind of external verification for it. So just a few little things about Test Kitchen to kind of uh, orient you. Test Kitchen has a couple of pluggable concepts. First off, we have drivers. The driver is what will spin up your infrastructure. In this case, um, I have Hyper-V. Uh, this is a plugin that I'm working on getting released. Uh, should be uh, my goal for the end of this week is to is to uh, have that out and available. The transport that's either SSH or WinRM, but that's also pluggable. So you can, if you want to create something that talks over a serial console, you can. Uh, but that's just a mechanism for everything in Test Kitchen to talk with the guest OS that you spin up. Then we get down to the verifier. That's what runs our tests and, ver and validates what we're actually doing. And uh, there's now a pester verifier that is live out and available. And what that will do is connect the nodes over WinRM or uh, if you're using SSH, um, if you have SSH installed on your servers, it will connect and it will run whatever pester tests you have provided for that configuration. Then we get down to Provisioner. So the Provisioner is another plugin that I recently released and that's for desired state configuration. By default, Test Kitchen comes with uh, Chef Zero, Chef Solo, some different ways to run Chef Client, as well as a shell provisioner, which will just run shell scripts. And whether it's PowerShell or Bash, something like that. 
So now with, with the DSC provisioner, we can test our DSC resources, DSC configurations using Test Kitchen as well. Now we start getting into the meat of what we're actually going to configure and set up. And the file that I'm in, it's a kitchen.yaml, or .kitchen.yaml, so it's a, a hidden file on uh, most Linux systems. The, um, this is where we kind of spell out what driver, what platforms, what tests we're going to actually execute. So that's, that's the document we're in. It's, it's in YAML. Take it, take it for what it's worth. It's very picky about spaces. Um, not a huge fan of it, but hey, that's what, that's what it is. So, and it's open source. So if you want a different format, pull requests accepted. Um, so platforms is where we define what operating systems and what what uh, what virtual machines and stuff that we want to test against. For example, in this case, I want to test against 2012 R2, WMF4, and WMF5. I could easily plug in images for 2012 or 2008 R2. Um, and you'll see where that actually becomes important when we get down to the command line. Then we have suites. These are the test uh, the test and configuration groups that we're going to run. So for each suite that we define, it will spin up one node from each platform and run those and apply that configuration and run those tests. So let's see what that this all translates to then on the command line. I'll go up a little bit on the font size here. Well, that's not a problem. Uh, except for trying to figure out how to make the font size bigger. That just won't work. Yeah, that's what I was just trying, and that doesn't seem to want to do it. Let's see. Um, let me try. Try one more thing, and if not, we'll try just squinting. There we go. That any better? That's beautiful. All right, moving on. So I'm going to, so the, the main command for test kitchen is kitchen. Um, this little BE that I'm typing in front of that, uh, that's a little shortcut I have for bundle exec because I'm running a development version of this because I'm uh, using a development version of the uh, Hyper-V provider. Uh, very soon, we will have a release of, uh, of Test Kitchen that will support uh, the features I'm showing you right now. If I do have some instructions out on GitHub as far as how you can get this development version working um, very easily with installing Chef DK and a couple of commands. So, so we're going to type properly. So the first command I'm going to show you here is kitchen list. And that's going to take a look at that YAML document that we were just looking at and determine what test suites we're going to build up. And so for each suite that I defined, I defined start website and stop website. It's going to create one node of each of the platforms that I specified, one with WMF4, one with WMF5. We can see the driver for all those specified was Hyper-V. Provisioner, desired state configuration, verifier, pester, and transport WinRM. You see this last action. Um, there is a flow that ki Test Kitchen follows. And the first step that happens is that we create nodes. And for expediency and speed, I'm only going to create one node. Um, at, uh, and we'll walk through 
what happens there, and then we'll spin up some other stuff after that. So kitchen create, we'll spin up a node. There's a very handy thing that test kitchen will do. Um, if you don't specify anything, it'll start spinning up all your nodes. If you do start, if you do want to specify a specific node or group of nodes, it will do some regex matching on the names. So I could do like, uh, let's do start website. And I want WMF4. So I can just specify a little regex there. And it will start to spin up my 2012 R2 WMF4 box in the start website suite. So if, if I wanted to run like all the tests just against WMF5 nodes, I could have just typed WMF5 at, at the line and it will just go through and match. So what's going to happen is Test Kitchen is going to leverage the Hyper-V plugin, spin up a machine. I have a base VHD in order, because it, uh, this workflow is very, very, uh, intend to be very, very rapid. The machines aren't long lived. I'm just using differencing disks. It makes this go much, much faster. You can get a, you can get a uh, Windows Server node up in under a minute. Uh, you know, someday when we have access to Nano, that will be faster and faster. So, I'm, and then containers even faster. So that's, uh, that, that's something I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, because these testing cycles can take a little bit of time. So we've got a node up. It's verified that it can communicate over WinRM to it and tells us, hey, it took me just shy of a minute to get this thing up and running. The next thing that we can do is converge it. So converge will apply the DSC configuration that we've specified for this. So I'm going to start the converge and then we'll take a look at what it's actually applying. So by default, Test Kitchen will follow some patterns. And the pattern I've defined for the DSC provisioner is inside your DSC resource, so the, the folder that we're in is a DSC resource module, a module with DSC resources inside of it. Uh, this is the C Web Administration module from PowerShell.org. All of this code and the, and the sample config file is up there in a branch that I have out there. Uh, in, uh, in, it's uh, Esmerowski adding tests branch. So this is all, you can guys go see, you can pull this down, see exactly what I'm, I'm working with here. So by default, it will look in a folder called examples for a file called DSC configuration. And it will run the configuration named for the suite name. So the suite name that we have is start website. So let's find that, so there's another configuration down here. Let's see website start website and it's going to go through and apply that configuration. We're not doing very much here. We're making sure web servers installed. We drop down a basic uh, index.html file and we stand up and or well, we verify that the default website is actually installed and started and there's a little dependency making sure the files are so it's not an extremely complex configuration, but it's intended to exercise one set of behavior from the C Web Administration module. What this does is then it gives me confidence that if I tell my configuration to use a C Web Administration module to stand up a website, it's going to do what I expect it to do. It's going to make sure that that site's there and start it. So what actually does that verification? Well, before that, let's see if our configuration is done applying. Hey, that output, uh, it's a little harder to read that color, but it's basically the same output you'll see from right verbose when you apply uh, start DSC configuration. And we get to the end, everything looked like it ran fine. But how do we verify that? Well, we use the verify command. Now, everything I'm, I'm stepping through here, there's a command that wraps this whole workflow up so you can do it all in one shot. Um, but you can do 
individual commands so that you can kind of step through and you can reconverge a node. You can run tests multiple times. So we're going to run our verification. And what we're actually running are some pester tests. And they're inside my module in a folder called test. Um, I'm probably going to change that default folder to match the uh, test folder structure that uh, is now out on, out on the uh, PowerShell DSC repo. So we can keep kind of tests all in one spot. So that will likely change uh, where my default expectation is for, for tests. Um, right now it's a folder called test, integration, and we are running uh, start website. So I have, a t I have tests under there. And we have some basic tests. We want to verify IIS is installed. And I'm using Pester for this because Pester is awesome. And if you don't know why, you should go back and watch the video from Dave Wyatt on Monday. He goes through some of the specifics there. But in addition to testing my code, I can use Pester to test any assertions that I can make in PowerShell. So I can run get Windows feature web server installed and make sure that that exists. I can get a website and make sure it's not null. Verify that the state is what I expect it to be. And then I can actually go out and make a web request and make sure the content matches what I expect. So Pester is not just constrained to running tests about functions internally. We can use this to make assertions against the state of a system and therefore validate we've done what we expected to do with desired state configuration. Steve? Yes? That is, the mag that is the magic of Test Kitchen. So there is a, uh, so there's a transport uh, abstraction that we have. And part of, the pr part of the process that the test verifier that we put together wrote, writes, it'll go find the tests where they're either by convention or you can specify a path to them. It will bundle them up, ship them over WinRM, and then uh, drop them to a uh, known location on the remote system. And then, th then when we, ex we change directory over there and execute pester from that, from that spot. And did you leave it there? I mean, did you leave all the files in the, in the VM? Yes. So um, uh, I'm going to repeat that, because uh, I forgot to repeat the question to begin with. First question was, how do we get the tests from my local machine over to the remote node? And that is, uh, that, that's over WinRM, that's we bundle up the files locally, we ship them to the nodes, that are the system under test, and then we run them there. There's a follow-up question, do we leave those things there? Yep, because when we're done with this, we blow the machine away. Yes? When you're, uh, when you're prepping a VM for use, for a virtual disk for use with uh, test kitchen, is there like a particular process, similar to like what you do with uh, the Vagrant or something? Okay, so the question is, when we're prepping a machine for use with Test Kitchen, um, is there a process to prep it for Vagrant and that, and that kind of thing? Um, yes and no. So, uh, if you, so Vagrant is one of the drivers that you can use. So if you know how to prepare a machine for Vagrant and whatever virtualization you use there, whether it's VMware, whether it's VirtualBox, Hyper-V, um, any of the other plugin systems, as long as you can build a box for Vagrant, you, you, you're okay. From the Hyper-V side of things, it's a, uh, it's a VM. The one thing that you need to do is you need to reset some of the WinRM settings, or you need to set some of the WinRM settings um, so that they're a little more relaxed, so that the Ruby gem can talk to them properly. Um, and those settings are defined uh, in the uh, in the uh, WinRM gem uh, documentation. I'm working on adding the extensions that we did at Chef to allow us to, when you're coming from a Windows box, because in order to run the Hyper-V provisioner, you have to be on a Windows box. So, because uh, it's using PowerShell and Hyper-V. So, uh, to use the extensions that we have um, at Chef for leveraging native Windows auth, so it can, it, you don't have to relax the settings, you can just use negotiate auth right out of the box. And, um, but that is in progress, not actually done. Yes? So you're showing here using it for unit testing a, a fresh build out. Is there any way that you could use it when your stuff has been up for a while and you just want to see if everything's still working or diagnostics? Yep. So um, so there's there's a couple of ways about uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. Number one, 
is you can uh, take a take a VM, a base VM, as uh, take a snapshot of one of your production VMs and use that as the base for what you're going to spin up in Test Kitchen. Um, that would be, you know, that's one route. The other route is I can uh, initially apply in my configuration, I can initially apply my current production config and then after and converge the node, point the point the uh, that can point the kitchen YAML at a different at a different configuration, and say okay, now apply this to it. Um, that's the the two phase part isn't actually uh, the two phase t testing is still a little more on the manual side, um, though that's a workflow we want to see better support for. So um, I don't remember if I repeated the question. So the, the, the question I had just answered was, how do I, how do I test against, uh, you know, this is testing against a fresh VM. How do I test against some existing configuration? So there, there's a couple of potential ways to, either, you know, grab, grab a, a snapshot of what you're actually running and use that as the base to test off of or converge once with the old config and then converge, sec, take a, do a second converge step with a, the new config. So you could, um, yeah. It, so, it, so because it, because this is kind of a uh, because it's a plugin system, you could actually just write a provider that knows how to talk and verify that there's a machine out there by whatever name. Um, the all of the existing providers pretty much assume I'm spinning up a new I'm spinning up a new machine because the default assumption at the end of a test run is that if everything is successful, we tear it down and move on. So, um, as far as you know, testing because by the time the configuration gets to production, it should have been thoroughly tested in this manner. So, testing machines in production, my config management results should be consistent enough to tell me what production looks like. All right, let's take a look at what actually happened from our verification run. So one of the so the, the pester verifier is actually pretty early days. It's out there and available. It works, but you can tell the formatting is a little off as far as how, how the results come out because it drops some. It, it seems to eat some line breaks, but it runs all my tests. Shows me oh shows me all shows me they all passed, and then returns. Oh, oh. Touchpad's a little touchy. Um, <laughs> so then it runs and ver finishes the verification. Now I can run this verify multiple times. I can make tweaks to my test, have it re-upload files, bring them back, you know, bring them back down. But the, you know, the the overall st story is that we can do something like. Kitchen test, WMF4. We'll start with a clean screen. And what this does is it gives us a, so we can use Pester to do our unit testing as we're, as we're, as we're writing our resources. We, we build tests to verify the functionality of the little helper functions that we write if we, if we take advantage of Don's pattern of getting functions out of the get test and set methods and getting them into the module. We can write some unit tests and expectations around those. But once we get to the point of actually declaring configurations and we've, we're pretty solid in the logic there, we can actually validate that at the end of the day, the side effects of the configuration or the, or the, the end results of the configurations are what we expect them to do. So when we run test, it, re it makes sure that we're starting with a clean slate, looks for any existing instances of, uh, of, the, uh, of the VMs, rips them down if they're there, and starts spinning them up again to test and, and, to test and deploy. Um, some of the conventions I, m I mentioned around Test Kitchen are 
It looks in an examples folder for a DSC configuration. All of this, all of these, you know, kind of default assumptions are overridable and are docked in the uh, in the on the uh, GitHub site for the provisioner. The or uh, yeah, for the provisioner, the test. Just follow that test integration pattern. I'm going to make some tweaks to that to, uh, like I said, to uh, follow the convention that we're seeing in the uh, PowerShell that, uh, the, with the resource kit repo. Um, one interesting thing to note is I can, I can tell Test Kitchen to run these things concurrently. So one of the other uh, projects I have in flight right now is an Azure provisioner. So you can tell it to do these things concurrently and say, hey, start spinning up all my nodes at once. You know, in, in this case, I'm a little resource constrained on this machine. It's not, it's not the same in my home lab on my Hyper-V box there. I can, I can actually spin up multiple nodes at once. And the problem is, is when I'm looking at the output on the command line, stuff's all intermixed. So I'm getting intermittent results. Test Kitchen logs as it goes. And we get the log files for each of the nodes in this .kitchen folder. And for each node, there's a log file. And all of the output that gets logged to the console gets logged for that individual machine to its own log file. So you can come back and, and see what the, what the individual things are. Then there's a combined log at kitchen.log. So everything there is logged and the outputs there. Um, what the Hyper-V provisioner does is it keeps the differencing disk in that .kitchen folder. So when you're done with your tests, you can blow that away. You don't, it doesn't, uh, that folder is all disposable stuff. Um, the last little bit of uh, administrivia around this is that this folder structure, embedding this kitchen.yaml inside a single resource is only one part of the story. This is how we can make sure that a particular resource behaves how we expect it to do, but you also wanna be able to use this pattern to test what you might be deploying into production. So you want to have a, you might want to have a series of custom resources that you're using And that series of custom resources might be, it might just be the C-Web Administration module, but it might, you might also have, maybe you're using some of the resources I developed for Stack Exchange, maybe you're using something from the resource kit, maybe you're using some, uh, some custom resource you've written internally. So there's a folder structure. that the DSC provisioner understands out of the box. We have an examples folder and a test folder, just like we expect. But there's a modules folder that you can stick any DSC resource module, any modules with DSC resources into. And you can point that wherever you want. So you could point that back at your C program files, Win, uh, Windows PowerShell modules folder. And anything in that will get sucked across to the guest machine deployed into uh, program files, Windows PowerShell modules on that node so that they're available for generating your configuration. So you can build production-like configurations. Yes? Is that functionality only available in the build that you're using now? Or is that the, the, well, this module supporting functionality? So the, as far as like the DSC config, uh, so the DSC provisioner only exists as it stands now. So, so th this DSC provisioner is shipped. So you can use this on, with with the Vagrant provisioner, with any of any of the provisioners for, or any of the drivers for Test Kitchen that have been updated to understand WinRM. Okay. Uh, that that's a process that's ongoing. Uh, next ver when next version of Chef DK ships, which should be relatively soon, that's when all of that stuff will be um, where you can do that without having to bundle install it, which is how. Uh, how you can do, how you can build uh, bundle up dependencies uh, 
in the Ruby ecosystem. Okay. So, um, so, and going back to the question, because I can't remember to say the question before I answer it. The question was, uh, is, is, this DS, is this functionality with bundling up the DSC modules available now? This mo the DSC provisioner is published. It's out on Ruby Gems. You can gem install it, um, that, which is how you get the dependencies in the, in the Ruby environment. Or you can go grab the code on GitHub. Uh, so in the, slot, in the handful of slides I have, that's one of the le resource links. So, uh, so how that works. So you have the exact same type of configuration if I'm doing that module-based deployment. The DSC provisioner can actually understand if it's, in a, if it's in a module that has DSC resources or if it's in a folder that has this module structure. So you can then build up your configurations that way. So depending on whether or not you want to test your existing infrastructure or whether or not you want to test you know, and package, uh, package a kitchen YAML with resources that you ship, you have, you have the options. So let's go and take a look at what happened in our test run. And we'll scroll back because there's a lot of scroll back. So we started out, we kicked out the, we started up test kitchen, went through a cleaned up prior instance, if, the, if there was one, which, which there was. Then I went and started doing all the provisioning and stuff that we saw that we stepped through. We stepped through all those individual steps, but kitchen test runs them all for us. Oop, and oh, hey, oh. One thing I forgot to mention about the DSC provisioner is there are settings in that provisioner to twiddle and control um, the various parts of the local configuration manager. So by default, it will set if, if the local configuration manager understands debug mode, it can set debug mode to all so that uh, if you rerun converges and you're changing resources, it will pick up, it'll pick up your changes without uh, having to worry about the caching. Um, if you, uh, one of the things I'd like to support is uh, with WMF5 having alternate pull servers so you can ship a configuration and pull your, config, pull your resources from that, um, from that node. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell in the projector, but you can see that we change colors as we start changing nodes, and that, that's actually behavior that you'll see throughout Test Kitchen. Um, to give you some visual cue that, hey, what you're looking at is different from one of the other nodes. But it spun up. We had a spot where it finished verifying. Oh, let's uh, go up just a couple of steps. So the verification finished successfully. And then it moved right into destroying the, v the VM. So uh, where this is where this is kind of handy is you're working locally. You're not going to leave a bunch of VMs spinning around. If you're working with a cloud provider, you're not going to leave a bunch of machines running that you don't necessarily need to have running. Um, this is where if you're using cloud infrastructure, you need to understand the billing practices of the cloud infrastructure you are do you are using. Like if you're using AWS, they bill by the hour. So if I spin up something and it takes 10 minutes to test and I tear it down, I'm still getting billed for the hour. Um, and if you're running lots and lots of tests, that can get expensive. Um, Azure bills on a more granular thing. So that's very that's a handy thing. And that's something I'm looking forward to finishing up the Azure provisioner for. Um, so you, you want to be aware of that if you're using cloud infrastructure. If you're testing locally, um, you have a little, you have, you have more concerns about immediate resources that you have available than not. So we jump right into running the second group of tests. So we, the first test it ran was the start website, then it goes through and runs a stop website configuration where that does kind of what 
it's described, it fires up the default website and makes sure it's stopped. Now, you can definitely make your configurations that you test more complex, test more features of them. It's just a matter of how much time you want to spend uh, running, that, running those configs. And for demo purposes, we want to keep that relatively short. The nice thing is, is these things are incremental. You don't have to, to get started with testing your configurations. You don't even have to start with tests. Just getting a sample configuration that you can spin up and get to converge, you can jump onto that box and manually start splunking around and verify that it did what you expected to do. And then you can start developing your tests locally on those, uh, on those nodes that you spin up. Then you start pulling them into your module and now those tests become automated. And now you don't have to manually splunk around and figure, that, figure out that that particular feature was the way you expect it. And you can add, add the next one. You don't have, you know, in order to ship tests, it doesn't have to cover every exact thing to begin with. You can build, you can build these things iter iteratively. And if you find a test isn't, isn't providing any value, you get rid of it. Bad tests are worse than you know, no test because they make you feel like there's something that's being covered that's not really important. So um, with that, I've got a few more minutes for questions. Yes? So it looks like it, uh, the question is: It looks like it uses PowerShell. Is there any question? Is there any uh, plans to make it PowerShell? Uh, there aren't any plans at the time. Um, part of that because it is this is a cross-platform tool, so I can use the same framework on my Mac on a, on a Linux node to spin up and test Windows machines. Um, you know, if PowerShell becomes cross-platform, that becomes a much greater greater selling point for making that happen. Um, but from a, from a standpoint of, uh, of like creating some PowerShell wrappers for, for calling this stuff, um, you could implement the same type of framework specifically for, um, and, and actually, uh, uh, I think, uh, Sergey who works on the, uh, DSC extension for Azure, they've implemented something similar to this for testing the DSC extension, uh, in, in just PowerShell. The nice thing about Test Kitchen is, there's another, there's, there's an ecosystem of other provisioners and things that makes it, I can mix and match. So I, I can override various settings. So I can actually test a DSC configuration against the chef recipe that's applying DSC resources and see if there's any, any difference or so. Um, I can also plug in different test uh, frameworks and things. Um, but back to uh, making, uh, making PowerShell friendly commands for it. Um, that's not, plan, but it's open source and we welcome contributions in that, in that realm. And if, if I had time, I would love to do it, uh, but it's not on my radar at the moment. Yes, Lee. Is there any uh, concept of external testing where the tests are run against a spun up machine rather than from within it? So for example, making sure that port 80 is actually able to talk, uh, be spoken to. All right, so there is a question about it, whether uh, external testing of a node is, uh, is part of this. Um, that is, there's not currently, it, the, the framework would support it. It's just a matter of writing a verifier. In the verifier, you can do whatever you want. In, in the case of, uh, of the pester verifier, we're reaching out over WinRM to execute commands, but you could execute commands locally from the node. You could actually remote out to another machine to connect, you know, depending on if I'm in Azure and I have a VNet and I want to connect something over that, over that VNet rather than out over the internet, you can, you could totally do that type of stuff. It's just a matter of it's code that needs to be written. The, the framework supports it. In your, uh, your kitchen.yaml mm -hmm. uh, that you had, you had one verifier listed, can, can you use multiple verifiers? Yes. So the, the question is, can you use multiple verifiers? I have one listed in, in the kitchen YAML. Um, so how the, how, the, how the configuration actually get, ends up getting built is you know, the top level declarations are kind of your defaults. But at any point in this, I can override things. So I could say, 
you know, I want to use the pester verifier for for this suite of tests. And the YAML will complain about that, but so we'll get the indenting right. But and then I could specify another pet, uh, another verifier for the next suite, or I could specify on a, on a per node type basis. So like for my Windows nodes, I could specify that I'm using Pester, and I could use server spec for my Linux nodes, for example. Yes. Probably an obvious question, but is it the same thing with my provisioner or whatever the exactly? The yep. Uh, so is the same capability for provisioner? Yes. Anything that anything that's being defined. So I could define a, another suite where my provisioner is, oh. so I could, I could provide alternate provisioners. And so if I do something like this, it's all crazy talk here. Um, And I go through and I do my kitchen list. Oh, I, oh, I didn't include Chef Zero in the gem file here. Um, let's jump back. We can fix that, so you can. Um, what did it ask for? Uh, it should be included with kitchen. Oh, well. um, I'll figure out what's going on there. But you can provide, you can you can specify those overrides. It's it's kind of mad at me because I'm using Bundler and but you can specify these overrides at any particular point in time. And then when when that when kitchen list builds up its list, where it's a provisioner DSC, it would say provisioner chef zero for that for that particular node. Um, and so you know. At, Again, it's, you set up your defaults and you can specify overrides of any of these things. Um, I could specify overrides of which VHD to use for a particular test, for example, or um, what DSC configuration to point at. And, and, and any of that type of stuff can be, can be, can be kind of twiddled at any, at any point in the, in the uh, kitchen YAML. And then when kitchen builds up the list of things to do, it will be there. Uh, one final thing is you, you're starting to uh, explore Test Kitchen. If you're trying to figure out what the default parameters that are being passed are, there's a really handy command called Kitchen Diagnose. And what that will do is it will determine what all of the various, oh, um, did I not say, oh, uh, I, and I misspelled something. So Kitchen Diagnose will run through and build up kind of all of the various settings that each of the capabilities has. So for this, for example, this it's going to look for my tests under, and yes, I know PowerShell org is misspelled. I missed the key. Um, <laughs> but we'll see uh, C Web Administration test integration. That's where it's going to look for uh, the pester tests. Uh, the default username it's going to pass, RDP port, um, any of that type of stuff. And the template that I use is to figure out where to connect to WS Man, uh, pr the various provisioner settings, all of the, uh, DS, uh, the LCM settings that you can pass, the various Hyper-V settings that are being passed. You get to see all of the settings. It's kind of like, all right, here you can take a look under the covers, figure out what isn't getting passed right, and then you can make your changes to your configuration. So, uh, or you can report the bugs. With that, I'm out of time. 
So thank you guys very much. I hope uh, Test Kitchen looks somewhat interesting for you. And very uh, as soon as as soon as we release Chef DK zero uh, zero five zero, I will have a blog post on how to get started using DSC with that. So thank you. And the button is pushed.